Well, hey, everybody. God bless you. Thanks for joining me. This is Fred Krop coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And I've been doing a series of messages called How to Strengthen Yourself in the Lord. And uh, I'm talking today about how to stay strong in the Lord by staying in your lane. This is part two. And so in my last session, I began to talk to you about how important it is for you and I to stay and function in the calling and the gifting that God has called us to be. One of the pressures that comes on our life when we don't feel good about ourselves, uh, we think other people are better than us, is then, then we think, well, we want to do what they're doing, or we want to be the prophet that they're being, or whatever it would be, the teacher, uh, the uh, the evangelist, whatever it would be, that we want to be like somebody else rather than be ourselves. But uh, the, I think it's really important if you're going to stay strong in the Lord that you stay in your own lane. You see, God gives you grace to be who you are. God gives you grace and gifts to do the things that God has called you to be. And when you step outside of that, guess what? You're going to start, it's going to become a, a thing that's stri it's a strife for you. It's hard. It's, it's, you get under stress and pressure. Uh, it never comes out as good as you, know, you would like it to be. It's because you've gotten out of your lane. And so you can go back in the last session I talked about some of the things of how we get out of our lane and also I began talking to you about how there's some things you, that you can do to stay in your lane. So I want to give you a theme verse here just to start off with. It's found in Romans chapter 12 uh, verses 3 through 8. I'm not going to read the whole passage but it says this. Paul writes and he says, for, he says, for through the grace given to me I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each, each of us, a measure of faith. For just, he says, for just as if, just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another." Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us each exercise them accordingly. So here it is. We're going to pray. We're going to jump in. Paul is talking about we, all, we have many members in the body, but all the members do not have the same function. I don't have the same function as you. You don't have the same function as me. But guess what? We need each other. I need you to stay in your lane, and you need me to stay in my lane. Let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us as I begin to, uh, once again, talk about things that will help you to stay in your lane. And by the way, if you're joining on Facebook, make sure you click share, leave your comments, and prayer requests, and uh, also make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is posted in the chat. It's Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. -P. Anyhow, let's pray. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. So Lord, once again, we thank you for your amazing grace and your love and how you want every one of us to walk in the fullness of your calling and your purpose and to bear fruit that remains forever for the kingdom of God. So Lord, I'm asking as those that are listening to me, I pray they'll share this. This is such an important topic. I pray that they will get it, that we will understand how to identify our lane and how to stay in our lane so we can produce the most fruit for your kingdom. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We ask you to speak to us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Well, I'm not going to repeat everything that I did in the last session. In the last session, uh, I, I talked about uh, that, uh, you know, we need to, how do we uh, stay in our lane? And I talked about some different things. I'm going to just highlight those very briefly. You can go back to Stay in Your Lane, Part 1, which you can either find on the uh, Healing Rooms uh, YouTube channel, Healing Rooms of, of Santa Maria YouTube channel, or you can find it on my YouTube channel, or you can go back through the Facebook archives or the, the Facebook page of the Healing Rooms uh, and find this message called How to Stay in Your Lane or Stay in Your Lane Part 1. But here's some of the things that I talked about last time. 
Uh, one of the keys now I'm talking about, for those of you that are joining, I'm talking about understanding uh, how to stay in our lane so that we don't, guess what, when we get out of our lane, it becomes dangerous for ourselves and for other people, right? Just like driving. Come on, folks, stay in your lane. You know, I just was up in the Bay Area. I was up in the San Francisco area. And there are people that their whole purpose in life is to cut everybody else off and weave in and out of traffic as fast as they can. Uh, and guess what? It just makes everybody else nervous. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a wreck waiting to happen. <laughs> so, hey, by staying in your lane, don't be a wreck that's waiting to happen. All right. So here are some of the things that I mentioned last time. Number one, understand the calling that God has put on your life. And then again, I told you to pray Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. The second thing that I mentioned was recognize and develop the gifts that the Lord has given you. God has given to every one of us gifts and talents and abilities, and we need to begin to function in our gifts, understand what our gifts are. Uh, you have to learn that by stepping out by faith, practicing, uh, stirring up the gift that God has put in you. Now, how uh, then also the third thing I talked to you about was uh, on how to stay in your lane is to know who the Lord has joined you to and uh, who have the same calling and vision that you have. And so I mentioned that Paul had several people. He lists in his uh, writings and his letters. He names a lot of people that these were people that were joined to Paul in the same purpose and calling, which it was an apostolic call to go out and plant churches, to equip churches, to strengthen churches. And so he names a lot of people, Barnabas, Silas, Timothy, Titus, Luke, Mark, Aquila and Priscilla, Epaphroditus, Epaphras, and many, many others. So that was the third thing. Then the fourth thing that I talked to you about uh, actually, this is the, now I didn't talk to you about that. I'm going to talk to you now about that. So what is the next thing that you need to do in order to stay in your lane and stay in the hope of your calling and stay in the strength of the Lord? Well, here it is. Be clear about the sphere of influence that the Lord has given you and what isn't your sphere. The Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, he says, But we will not boast beyond our measure, but within the measure of the sphere which God apportioned to us as a measure to reach even as far as you. So Paul understood that he said, I'm not a, an apostle to everybody, but I do have a sphere of of influence. He understood that Peter was an apostle to the Jewish people and he was an apostle to the Gentiles. And so each one of us is given a sphere. It's when you get out of your sphere, that's when all of a sudden the grace of God dries up and you don't have the strength and the power and the anointing to accomplish what God calls you to accomplish when you get out of the sphere. So it's important to understand what is the sphere that God has given you. And so, um, you know, wh where are you involved in ministry? I was a pastor for a number of years. Uh, I was a senior pastor and an associate pastor both. Uh, and when I was a senior pastor, I had a sphere that was had to do with the people that were considered me as their pastor. And uh, then when I, would, I worked for, I was uh, associate pastor in a much larger church in Seattle. We had 6,000 people with 22 pastors. And guess what? We all didn't have the same sphere within that. Uh, my sphere uh, uh, that I covered was very specific areas that I ministered in, which had to do with missions and equipping people and had to do uh, with what we called encounter retreats. So if you're going to stay in your lane, you've got to understand the sphere that, that God has given you and what isn't your sphere. Stay in your sphere. The fifth thing, uh, and this one, uh, some of you are going to, I'm about to, uh, uh, to say a dirty word uh, to a lot of people and sometimes, sadly, to Christians. Okay, are you ready for the dirty word? Okay, here it comes. Now, here's another key to staying in your lane. Know those, know whose authority the Lord has put you under. Know whose authority, there's the dirty word, the Lord has put you under. Now, if when I say the word authority, all of your flags come up and you get all of a sudden like, oh, that's the end of this video for me. 
It's because you don't understand biblical authority and how important authority is. And some of you may be thinking, well, yeah, uh, I, I, am, I am under God's authority and I'm not going to be under anybody's authority. Do you know that that is contrary to what the Bible teaches? Let me just give you a couple of verses. And let me just tell you, a safe place, to, a safe thing that will keep you in your lane is being understanding whose authority that God has put you under. Now, Hebrews chapter 13, listen to this. This is, uh, we don't know who exactly the writer of Hebrews is. Some believe it's Paul. Some believe it might have been um, other, somebody else. But here's what the writer says. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. Now, so here the writer of Hebrews is telling us that we need to obey our leaders, and he's talking about spiritual leaders now in this situation. We have, there's different areas of authority. There's governmental authority. There's family authority. There's employment authority. Uh, there's the government authority. And then, of course, we have spiritual authority. Now, this is where uh, and, and here it is. As I, you know, it, it, again, this is assuming that the authorities have the right motive. And so as a pastor, um, my job was to help people to grow in what God had called them to be and do, but also was to watch out over their souls, not to control them or tell them what to do. But if I saw them heading for a cliff uh, and I knew they were about to crash, uh, it, you know, I, I would probably say something uh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go that direction because I, I, want, I want you to be okay, okay? So here he says, obey your leaders and submit to them for they watch over your souls. In Peter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, real interesting passage. For those of you who are joining me, I'm talking about how to stay in your lane, part two. And I'm talking about things that will help you to stay in your lane and have the power and strength of God or be strong in the Lord the key in again is to stay in your lane. Okay, so here's, and we're talking about know those who are in authority over you. Okay, so 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 8, Peter writes to specifically to young men. He says this, you younger men, likewise be subject to your elders and all of you be clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud. One version said he, another version says he opposes the proud, but he gives grace, that's the ability to do God's will, to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you at the proper time, Peter says, casting all your anxiety, stress on him because he cares for you. Then he says this, be sober of sober spirit and be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Now, if you catch that in the context, that's for, context, that's 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 8. He tells young men to be careful to be subject to or submit to their, their elders and clothe themselves with humility because God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Then he talks about the devil the adversaries prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So he's talking about protection for young guys that are just going around and they haven't learned a lot of things yet, but they are just got a lot of zeal and they're just going for it. And I'm all for that. Have all the zeal you can. But you need to understand there are people that God wants you uh, to have over your life that can speak into your life and say, look out. Uh, don't get off there thinking, you know, I've, I've heard, uh, heard about a young pastor of a thriving church, and he was telling one of his elders in his church, you're over 40 years old or over 50 years old, and I have no need for you. In other words, you can't teach me anything. Well, that is the opportunity for the devil to come in and bring in pride and arrogance, which the Bible says, Pride comes before a fall. So one of the keys to, uh, to staying in your lane is to know those who have authority over you. Uh, Paul talks about 
uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8, he says, For even if I boast somewhat further about our authority, which the Lord gave us for building you up and not for destroying you, he says. So authority is given to build you up. I, that's my favorite thing to do is to build up young people in God, to build them up, to be a father to them, to encourage them, to see them be successful. And so Paul says the authority that God gave him was for building us up, building people up, not for destroying them. Romans 13 is a, in the first several verses of Romans 13 is all about uh, that God is the one who establishes authority. It says this, Romans 13, 1, that every person be in subjection to the governing authorities, talking about Caesar now, for there is no authority except from God and those which exist are established by God. Then he goes on in verse 4, that was Romans 13, 1. He says, for it, talking about authority, is a minister of God to you for good. If you do what is evil, be afraid for it does not bear the sword for nothing. It is a minister of God, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. And so what is he talking about? That, that is that God has placed authority in our lives, not to control us, but to help us stay in our lane and to stand guard uh, with us to keep us from being distracted and led astray and eventually becoming lion food. That's right, roaring lion food, the devil food. So, if you're going to stay in your lane, make sure you find a, a place where there's some spiritual authority over your life. Now, again, uh, authority, I believe, comes from the bottom up, not from the top down. What do I mean by that? I mean that, you know, uh, you know it's not that there's people out there, they want to, well, there are people out there that want to control people, but it's not that, you know, you know as a pastor or a leader, uh, my job is, uh, and my calling is not to control people, but if people want my advice and they want to subject themselves or submit themselves to me as an elder or a pastor and so on, then authority works from the bottom up. It's up to me to go to make sure I am placed myself in that safe place of being under authority. So let me ask you a quick question. Are you accountable to someone in spiritual authority? Is there someone in your life uh, that could ask or challenge you when you move outside of your lane? So that was another one. Here's another thing. I have just a few more. I'm talking about, those of you joining, how to be strong in the Lord by staying in your lane. In other words, stay in your calling and gifting. Stay in the things that God has given for you to do. Okay, so I'm giving some ways that you can stay in your lane. Okay, make sure you leave your comments and prayer requests. Also, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and go back to, this is part two, go back to part one on stay in your lane and I'll, you know, I share several other things that will be helpful to you. Now, uh, here's the next thing and that is be aware of where the Lord has giving authority, giving, uh, giving you authority and where you do not have authority. Now, there's another way we stay in our lane. In other words, um, where do you have authority? Okay, so for example, uh, I have authority in my immediate family, those that live in my house, but I have daughters that have married uh, wonderful young men, and uh, I don't have authority in their house. Okay, so I understand, and, and so that husband has been given authority, and those parents have been given authority. I don't have authority over my grandchildren. Um, the, their parents do. So you see, uh, you have to understand and be aware of where God has given you authority and where he hasn't. I don't have authority to go out and arrest people. And, uh, you know, I don't have authority when I walk into a, to a, a, a church that, uh, that I am not the pastor and I'm not a pastor now. I'm, I'm actually, uh, uh, functioning more in a teaching role at the Healing Rooms at Apostolic Center in Santa Maria. But anyhow, uh, uh, you know, I can't walk into somebody's uh, church and just because I'm an elder and, 
in one church doesn't make me an elder in all churches. So understand where your authority is because when you step out of your sphere of authority, you're gonna you're headed for trouble, okay? You're going to step out of the grace of God. Here's another one that will help you to stay in your lane. Become aware of what activities that you do that bear fruit for God's kingdom and what do not. I talk about this a lot. You can go back to the first video where I explain that. The next thing I see is that another key to staying in your lane, all right, this is really basic, but it's super, super important. Are you ready for this? Stay daily in the Word of God and in prayer, and they will help you stay on track. Every day we should be praying, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life today. Every day we need to be praying, Lord, fill me. This is Colossians chapter 1. Fill me with the knowledge of your will, with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Help me to walk in a manner worthy of you, to please you in all respects, and to bear fruit in every good work. I need to be praying every day in Ephesians chapter 1. God, grant me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of my heart be open to know the hope of your calling, the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, and what is the power of God that is toward us who believe. So I recommend you follow a daily Bible reading program that gets you through the Bible at least once a year. Uh, some of them, you can find them on a U version of the Bible. It's an app you can get on your phone, and you can select. It has many, many, many different uh, Bible, um, you know, reading through the Bible uh, uh, selections that you can select, but I recommend you read through the whole Bible, preferably in a year, and some of them do the Old Testament once and the New Testament twice. Start wherever it's, you know, that you can, but listen, have some kind of da daily Bible reading plan that keeps you in the Word of God. Now, I'm not saying you you know, I just want to study one book of the Bible, or I just, I'm hung up on one verse. That's all great, but I think you need to get the whole picture from the whole Word of God. The Bible, uh, the, the, uh, the, Jesus said, the entirety of your Word is truth. Okay, come on. All right, here's another way to stay in your lane, and that is don't allow yourself to be distracted by what others are doing or they're not doing. Now, that's a, that's a challenge I know. Uh, because you're going to, you know, depending on where you are, you got people around you and uh, maybe them are super passionate people. And, uh, and so they think that everybody ought to be doing what they're doing, right? Or uh, you are not happy with yourself. You don't like yourself. And so then you get distracted by what others are doing. Now, let me give you a very wise words that wise words that came from jesus himself in the sermon on the mount here's the point learn what to say yes to and what to say no to okay that's matthew 5 verse 37 jesus said let your yes be yes and your no no for whatever is more than these is from the evil one <laughs> wow did you catch that? Let your yes be yes and your no be no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. So here it is. Uh, one of the keys to staying in your lane is to understand what to say yes to and what to say no to. Now, how do I define that? Well, does it fit with what God is calling me to do? I, in, at the Healing Rooms, we have many, many very passionate, strong ministries uh, and uh, we have uh, the, the leaders of our ministries are very wise, praise God. Uh, but some of them are so, you know, visionary and passionate. Then, of course, you know, none of them do this. I, I'm not saying that. But the tendency would be, well, you need to see, be a part of what I'm doing. You need to be in the ministry that I'm doing. I feel called to human trafficking. So you should be called to human trafficking. Or I feel called to the prophetic and I'm going to do that. And you know, well, you should. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't all prophesy, but, but you know, there, there are major ministries. Or I'm, I'm, you know, involved in worship. And so everybody ought to be up here on the platform involved in worship. Well, that's not your calling and not your purpose and not the gifting that God has for you, then you need to learn how, what to say no to and what to say yes to. Again, everybody wants you to be involved in what they're doing. Now, a little secret about that. If you're not a strong personality, and I, I am a semi-strong personality, um, don't do things out of guilt or shame 
or feeling obligated. Uh, let me say that one again. Don't do things out of being guilted into doing them, shamed into doing them, or you're feeling obligated to do them. Now, I think you ought to obey the Word of God. I'm not saying that. Here's what you do do. Do them out of the peace of God that is ruling in your heart. That's Colossians chapter 3. So function out of peace, not out of guilt, shame, or feeling obligated. If you're a firstborn, we feel obligated to everything. Firstborn, I'm a firstborn. I feel responsible for everybody. If somebody's hurting in China, I feel responsible for that. And of course, my tendency is want to uh, fix people's problems, uh, help people do things. But guess what? I've discovered God's not called me to do everything. He's only called me to do certain things. So again, don't do things out of guilt, shame, or feeling obligated. Another one is don't get caught up in someone else's passion unless it aligns with your passion. Okay, so again, I believe we ought to be passionate about, I'm passionate about what I'm doing right now with you. Uh, that is teaching you basic, fundamental, uh, equipping things that will help you to be successful in your Christian life. And I'm passionate about this. That's why I have a YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to under Fred Crop, as I've already mentioned. Again, those of you who are joining, I'm talking about how to stay in your lane and st to be able to stay strong in the Lord. And so do you stay where, you know, go with your passion. So I am, I love to listen to people that teach because teaching is my passion. Uh, I believe I'm a prophetic teacher. By that, I mean it, that God speaks to me uh, specific areas that he wants me to talk about right now to the body of Christ. And so I'll speak and teach on those things. So that is a passion for me and to motivate you. That's another passion. But okay, so that's my motivation. Uh, so be careful. I want to have to be careful not to get caught up in somebody else's passion. Now, one more thing about that is don't think that what others are doing is more valuable or important than what God has called you to do. So again, this is a, there's another whole series that I'll be doing coming up here called Identity Series. Uh, many, many Christians do not know who they are. Uh, and so because of that, they're wandering around trying to find their identity, their calling, their purpose, they're confused, uh, and they, they just are, are frustrated or depressed uh, and they, because they don't like themselves. They don't like who God's made them to be. Well, that's a danger, right? Don't think that what others are doing is more valuable or more important than what God has called you to do or to be. You are one of a kind. You are. I can't do what you can do. You have gifts and talents and abilities that I can never attain to, but I need you to do your part. When the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, when every part does its part, the body grows and builds itself in love. And then the last thing I want to talk about, about how to stay in your lane, and that is ask the Holy Spirit to keep you in your lane. Now, Jesus said, in John chapter 7, he said, uh, he, says, uh, he says, those who believe in me, as it were, out of their innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And says, in this he spoke about the Holy Spirit who had not yet been given, for he had not yet been glorified. So the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, and Jesus told his disciples, don't go anywhere without the Holy Spirit. And then in John chapter 14 and 16, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the helper. And the word in the Greek is paraclete, not parakeet, paraclete. And it means one who comes alongside to help. It's like you're a wounded soldier, another soldier that is your buddy who is wounded, picks you up, puts your arm over his neck, and he carries you to safety. The same is, that's what that word means. It's the Holy Spirit is there to help you. And I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Spirit to help me to stay in my lane. Help me, Holy Spirit, to know what to say yes to and what to say no to. How to, how to um, you know, what activities are, are bearing fruit and what aren't. Help me, Holy Spirit. So I want to end this session by praying with you about staying in your lane. Again, what I've highlighted in this session, this is, the, this is uh, Stay in Your Lane, Part 2. And uh, you can go back to part one. I encourage you again on my YouTube channel or the Healing Rooms YouTube channel, go back and catch up on part one. But in this session, I've been talking about things that help us stay in our lane.
And some of the things that I mentioned in this one was be clear about the sphere of influence the Lord has given you and what isn't your sphere. I talked about uh, know who is in authority or whose authority God has put you under. That's a biggie that will help you. I talked about be aware of where the Lord has given you authority and where he has not given you authority. I talked about become aware of what activities uh, that you do that bear fruit in God's kingdom and what do not. I talked more about that in the session one. Another one I talked about today was stay daily in the word of God in prayer. That will help you stay on track. And then I just mentioned don't allow yourself to be distracted by what others are doing or not doing. And then lastly, ask the Holy Spirit to help you stay in your lane. Well, let me pray for you as I close this session. I hope this was helpful to you. And again, uh, this make sure you've left your prayer requests and I go back and look at them. Uh, and so I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you. And Holy Spirit, I invite you now to help my brothers and sisters. Help us all to remember, stay in your lane. Lord, I believe that you give us grace where our lane is. You don't give us grace to be in somebody else's lane. So Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters to find their way into the purpose and plan and call and the will of God for their life. Lord, I pray that they'll begin to practice the things that will help them to stay in their lane. And Lord, I pray also that they will understand how valuable, how important they are and that God has given them personal, specific gifts, callings, abilities, uh, anointings that you put in their life and that they can be the best at just being who they are. I pray over them right now for the spirit of revelation to rest upon them and they would be confident about who you've made them to be. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Can you say amen? Well, listen, God bless you. I'm going to continue uh, on this series of how to strengthen yourself in the Lord. In my next session, I'm going to talk about how deep are you. Come on, your depth determines your strength. Well, in the meantime, I want you to know that, again, this is Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. Again, we have online ministry. We have open ministry on Monday nights, Tuesday mornings, Wednesday mornings. You can come and receive uh, be ministered to by a healing team, or you can go on to online ministry by clicking on our website. In the meantime, I want you to know that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.